Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. I've been watching a bunch of videos about machine learning algorithms, so today we're going to build an evolving neural network to play a Pong-like game. I'm going to start off explaining the concept of neural networks, and then start building up the code. If you just want to see the system evolving, feel free to skip ahead. I grabbed a version of the single-player Pong from GitHub, which is a bit janky, so we're going to need to modify it a bit. But the way it works is you hit the left arrow key to the move to the left, right to move to the right, and you try and return this Pong ball. Now every time you hit it, your score increases by one, and if you don't manage to hit it, your score will be decreased to zero. Two things I want to change, the score display is too small, and also the paddle gets stuck at the edge of the screen, so if I now hit the right arrow key, it takes a little while before it actually moves. So let's look at how a neural network works. A computer or a human, when making a decision, has to take into account some inputs. That's going to be things related to the environment. And based on those inputs, they're going to make a decision. They're going to have a choice, and those are going to be the outputs. So let's take an example. Let's say you're driving a car, and you start noticing things about your environment. So you know your speed, you know the distance to the next car, you know the next car's speed, and you know the speed limit of the, on this road. And based on those inputs, you want to make a decision. Do I hit the brake, or do I hit the gas? The way a neural network would do this is by assigning values to all of those inputs so you have data. And then every single node in that input is going to have some sort of influence on the output. So let's say, for example, if you have a high speed, you might be more inclined to brake. So the speed has a times two weight or multiplier, which is going to affect the final score for the brake. And then you might have a negative score, a negative weight, to influence the score for the gas. Now, you're going to have weights from every single node to every single other node, and that's where you get the network. Now once you sum all the influences of every single node of the inputs into the outputs, you might get a result like this. You get a 1 for break, a 0 for gas, which means that in this particular instance, given your inputs, the correct choice would be to break. What you can also do, instead of having the inputs directly affecting the outputs, is have something called a hidden layer. This hidden layer doesn't have any particular meaning other than it is just going to add complexity to your network. Now every single node in the input is going to affect every single node in the hidden layer, which will affect the outputs. That should be a pretty good start in helping you conceptualize a neural network. If you want to get into the nitty gritty of it, make sure to look into biases and normalizing functions. Okay, now that I've fixed those issues, we can talk about how we're going to evolve this neural network. Instead of having just one paddle, we're going to spawn 100 or so paddles, all with random neural networks. The inputs for this neural network are going to be the x position of the paddle, the x and y position of the ball, and the speed of the ball. And the outputs, there's going to be three. It's either going to decide to go left, go right, or stay still. The paddles that successfully return the ball will stay alive, and the ones that don't will disappear. Every time a ball is successfully returned, the fitness score of that paddle increases by one. The paddles will start out with random brain structures, meaning the weights that we talked about are going to be randomly chosen. Because of this, most of the paddles will suck, but a few of them will be a little bit successful just by accident. Once all the paddles for a given generation have disappeared, the most fit paddle will reproduce, which means that a new generation of 100 or so paddles will be created, all copies of the most successful paddle from the previous generation, but with slight mutations to the brain structure. As this process continues, the neural network evolves to become more and more successful at returning the ball. The original code is hard-coded for one paddle and one ball, which isn't going to work in our case because we need to generate in the order of 100 of these paddles and balls. So what we're going to do instead of hard coding is we're going to create a class for the paddle and a class for the ball. Each paddle is going to have its x position, its speed, and its score stored, as well as its last position. Whether or not we use that, I'm not totally sure. And every time we need to update this, we can call the update function within this class, which will update the current position, the last position, based on the speed. And then of course we want to draw it onto the screen, so we're going to have a draw function. The ball is going to be similar in almost all ways, except that in addition to the x position, it also has a y position and a y speed. The ball class also has an update and draw function. And just to double check, let's make sure the game still plays correctly. Looks like it's working. Yep, and our score reset. So it looks like everything is working as it should. We can now move on to generating hundreds of these paddles. So now what we'll do is we'll create 100 paddles, all with random neural networks. The ones that successfully return the ball survive, and the rest die out. 
Once all the paddles of a given generation die, the one that was most successful is selected to reproduce. This means that a hundred more paddles are generated which are all copies of that one paddle except with slight mutations. Um, this one is just doing it. <laughs> that's, that's totally random um, and I think the odds against that are probably pretty crazy low. Um, but of the hundred paddles we made, one of the random neural networks is now successfully playing Pong, so um, I don't know if I should chalk that up as a success or a failure. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, run it again. So that's all well and good, but it's no fun unless we can see the process. So let's create a graphic to show all the nodes in our simple neural network. You can see in the top left, I've created the input and output nodes, and then given the corresponding inputs and outputs so we can kind of start to see how this program is thinking. Now we can make lines to represent the connections from each of the input nodes to the output nodes. And finally, we can make the thicknesses of the lines represent the influence that each node has on another node. A thick blue line indicates a strong positive influence, a thin line indicates very little influence, and a thick red line indicates a strong negative influence. The most fit paddle from each generation is colored in blue so that we know which paddle the neural network we are seeing belongs to. The score represents the current score of the most fit individual of the generation. The still alive represents the number of individuals from the current generation that are still alive. And the generation represents the current generation. Now let's see what happens if we change the inputs. You'll notice that at the bottom of the inputs I've added the Y speed of the ball. I'm going to speed through the generations here, and what we'll notice is that with the extra inputs, it seems like the additional complexity has led the system to evolve much less successfully. In fact, the paddle is stagnating pretty much completely. It looks like adding complexity to our system didn't necessarily improve the results, which makes me wonder how different inputs and different network structures might affect the outcome. After 10 generations, this one isn't doing so hot. Neither is this one. Nope.
Okay, now we're on to something. This structure is doing okay too. For a final modification, I want to see what happens if I change the scoring function. So now what will happen is the score is going to reflect the number of times that the paddle successfully returned the ball, but depending on how far away the paddle was from the ball, this is going to affect the score as well. So let's see what happens if the distance is also incorporated into the score. Now, intuitively, it seems to me that this more advanced scoring structure should lead to a more effective neural network evolution, and it looks like in practice we're seeing that as well. Now, I'm sure there are plenty of you screaming at your computer saying this is a totally inappropriate use of a neural network, and you would be completely right. It's entirely overkill. In fact, if I go back to the original code and add just six lines telling the paddle to move to the right if the ball is to the right, and to the left if the ball is to the left, we get this behavior. Now, this is as effective as anything we were able to evolve with a neural network. I'd love to say that I realized this from the very start and was just doing this as an exercise, but the reality is this only became clear to me once this video was already pretty much done. That said, it could serve as a toy example of how a neural network can be applied in a vault, and it was a lot more fun and interesting to code than those six lines. 